Ohio Derby coming up and uh, really excited for the return of two fills. Yeah, I'm excited too. And uh, runner up in the Kentucky Derby. And I recently did a poll, a little chatter on Horse Racing Nation, some comments about who the best three-year-old is right now, the most accomplished three-year-old, uh, depending on how you define it. But two fills got a lot of love, a lot of excitement for his return. Uh, Mage is supposed to come back in the Haskell. So uh, yeah, th this group will sort itself out. And I think two fills going to have a big say, depending on what happens this weekend. Yeah, so let's dive into your odds. So you obviously made two fills the favorite. How low did you want to go on him? And yeah, I, I was a little nervous because I, I think he could end up winning this race and people will be crowing that they got three to five if that's what he ends up at. I end up, ended up doing six to five just because from a math standpoint with Bishop's Bay, Hay Strike, and then to a lesser extent, uh, Henry Q and Lord Miles, if I had made two fills odds on, those horses would have been 8, 10, 15 to 1 instead of where they are now. So ultimately decided to kind of err on the lower end with a horse like Bishop's Bay, who was second to Belmont Stakes winner Archangelo. And then Hay Strike, it sounds like I like him a little bit better than you. But, you know, if things fall apart going nine panels. Mm -hmm. I could see where he he could make some noise late. So I have him as the third choice at 6 to 1. Two fills, unquestionably the horse to beat. This is a 12-race card in Cleveland and the preceding race has 12 three-year-old fillies going nine furlongs. So maybe there's some opportunity with two fills uh, horizontally with the big fields uh, mm -hmm. for a, you know, signal that maybe doesn't get a lot of attention. Typically I do play thistle now. It's my home and native track. So I'm definitely going to be involved in the pools and not going to ignore two fills by any means, even if he's odds on, but Hey strike, I am interested in. All right. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing a Hay Strike and Lord Miles and, and of course, Bishop Spay run again. But I think so many people are, are waiting to see what two fills yes. can do here. And I think he would get pounded at even money. <laughs> um, I mean, Bishop Spay is a real horse. you got to be careful. Uh, he did give Archangelo quite a fight. But, uh, you know, two fills, I think with the Derby, right, it came back to it was a hot pace. And you had, you know, the closers, Mage and the Angel Vampire. Uh, disarm, you know, they came running and two fills was that only horse that was up there the whole time. So I think a lot of people believe, and there's a, there's a lot of reason to believe that he ran the best race in the Derby and, uh, and he could, could demolish a field like this, a pretty good field. So no. I think that would, that's pretty exciting to look forward to. I thought the Ruby was a good field and he basically took it to them. Obviously in Louisiana, it didn't go his way on the win end. But the one thing I would say with, with two fills for some optimism off this quasi layoff, it's not really as much of one anymore, but uh, he's so consistent. He runs his race. He runs well. Uh, and the Ruby was a big coming out party. And then the Derby, you know, there are plenty of people who think he actually ran the best race uh, in defeat. So uh, unquestionably the one to beat. And I think with Lord Miles in here, another Derby also ran much deeper uh, than uh, two fills was. But that's going to attract attention. He's a known name. Safi Joseph shipped in before and run well with White Barrio. So, you know, I, I think he'll be the underlay of this group. And to me, Hay Strike. Probably not Bishop's Bay, but Hey Strike is the horse I'll probably look to hook two fills up with because, uh, you know, if I were if I had a show parlay going and I got through the first 11, there's no question even at 220, I'd put it on two fills. It's just tough to see him uh, not being in the mix here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what he does. I mean, I think this after the Derby, I was saying that this is a horse for the Breeders Cup Classic down the road. I think he's got a limited potential. It's it's interesting that Rebelli points to the Ohio Derby, but we're talking about it. it's a half a million dollar race. It makes sense. Yeah. And uh, he just ran so well in the Derby. And I remember the morning after the Derby, we went back to see Mage. And then we're like, oh, let's go check out two fills. <laughs> and they were hot walking around and around. And we just stood and like, we looked up to him. He's just massive. He's just just a beautiful looking horse. And uh, and it, it's going to be interesting being my hard spawn. Um, He's going to get a distance. Yeah, no, the sky's has. the limit. Not that they're yeah. already not in the sky. But. Yeah, so I think it's going to be interesting how they can paint this horse, and maybe they're just trying to get an easier race and get a win under their belt here. No, and, you know, prep for the, the late summer big three-year-old races, the championship picture, you know, I would say the classic winners have an edge, but, you know, certainly at this point a win in the Travers, and then if you beat older males, uh, especially in the Breeders' Cup, you're going to get it. So plenty still to race for, and, 
yeah, quasi a stepping stone, but at the same time, 500,000. I mean, that's more money than Larry Ravelli typically got to run with, even when he was, you know, the best trainer in Chicago. So yeah. big opportunity. Yeah. Good betting race. Uh, you can work into exactos and trifectas uh, underneath as well. And as you said, you can string some of the big three, fours and fives together in some nice fields. All right. Well, so Ohio Derby, 12th of 12 races. Looking forward to it. Me too.